Why is sciatic pain worse at night and how to fix it? When patients receive a diagnosis of sciatica, they very wonder why their pain or what they're experiencing is typically worse at night. Well, to understand why sciatic pain tends to be worse at night is you have to really understand is what, the, what is the sciatic nerve. It's really the largest nerve in the human body. It's a mixed nerve containing something we call motor, which is gonna be um, information leaving your brain down your spinal cord, out the body to muscles, tissues, and organs, telling them what to do. And then of course, sensory fibers, which is nerves going back from your body to your spinal cord and your brain, relaying information to your brain. And that is how your nerve system works. It's sending messages out and receiving messages back. And all those messages go through nerves enter your spinal cord, go up your spinal cord to your brain. The, spot, the sciatic is one of these nerves. It's a sciatic nerve that comes out of the low back. It actually extends out of several nerve roots that go out of the low back, extends down the buttocks into the leg and down into the foot. In the classic area, it goes down the back of, the back of your leg, the, um, the back of your thigh, I'm sorry, the back of your leg and into your foot, to, to traditionally your big toe and along the bottom of your foot. Sciatica is a set of symptoms that are associated when you affect the sciatic nerve and it's pain or any type of abnormal sensation that can be felt anywhere down the sciatic nerve's pathway. Sciatica is not like a disease, it's not something that you catch. Sciatica is typically caused when the nerve's being pinched, compressed, or some type stretched or affected in some type of negative way. And normally this negative way is a mechanical type of compression or pressure. It's not normally happening as a result of some kind of disease or malfunction or something else that's occurring. It is compressive in nature. The way, the pain that you feel could be very, very dependent. Sciatica has a very large spectrum of the type of pain it could feel. So, it, and it's directly related to how much of the nerve is actually involved. It can range from very mild type of pain and discomfort to intermittent to, inter intermittent to very chronic steady pain. And it can be unfortunately very, very debilitating. It can feel like a dull ache. It can feel like sharp burning sensations down the back of the leg. It can feel like electric shocks shooting down your leg. The pain can be isolated to the lower back where the nerves just exit, or it can ridiculate on the entire lower extremity, typically one side and not the other. It can unfortunately lead to muscle weakness. Like I said, these nerves are innervating and they're controlling all the functions of your muscles and tissues and organs. So when you compress these nerves, it can lead to weakness where you have to find an ability to, to even stand or contract the muscles properly on that leg. The pain can also lead to a loss of movement and, and, and function in the lower body. It can lead to decreased reflexes. Traditionally, sciatic pain tends to be the most debilitating when it's nerve-related pain going down the back of your leg, causing very sharp stabbing types of pain that the patient can't even stand on the leg. The most common causes of sciatic are typically involved with alignment of the lumbar spine. And it's typically alignment that can affect the alignment of the vertebra, which calls the, the, bulge, the, the discs to either bulge or herniate to put pressure on the sciatic nerve roots that exit into the lumbar spine. These nerve roots come out, they kind of form together into the sciatic nerve, and then they branch back apart going down into the leg. So pressing on any of these nerve roots that form into the sciatic nerve can actually reproduce sciatic-like symptoms. The discs specifically sit in between adjacent vertebra. So you have, a, you, have a, you have a vertebra, you have a disc, and then you have a vertebra. And these discs allow for the body to have spine structures. They allow for space for the nerves to actually exit into the body, and they allow for movement of the spine. When these discs become injured or become misaligned because the spine itself misaligns, the disc itself can bulge out to one side. And when it bulges, it means the inner nucleus is sitting against the outer outer annulus or the outer fibers of the disc, and it can push the disc and bulge the disc against the surrounding area, leading to uneven pressure of the nerves, the sciatic nerve itself, and therefore this can cause sciatic type of pain. A herniated disc, with this is basically a bigger version or a worse version of a bulging disc, is where that inner nucleus actually pushes through the outer, outer annulus, causing pressure or loss of space within that area where the sciatic nerve root is coming out, leading to compression and impingement. Now, why do we know that patients that have sciatica, or any type of nerve pain for that matter, is typically worse at night? And normally it's because when you're trying to relax and you're trying to, um, you have no distractions, you have nothing that could distract you from the pain that you're experiencing in the body.
And in addition, as your body tends to fall asleep, your, most of your, your muscular system and your organs tend to slow down, but your, your nerve system becomes more sensitive. It becomes hyper aware. It becomes almost kind of speeds up in a way. And this can make it very difficult for you to find a comfortable position to sleep because things that didn't hurt you during the day because you're moving and being distracted, now may, the same position may hurt when you're trying to sleep. So it makes it very difficult for you to find a comfortable position. Also, pressure points from just laying down on your bed can, uh, can stretch the sciatic nerve even more, and that can lead to more pain. So how do you reduce your sciatic pain at night so you can fall asleep? Well, the first thing is try positions that don't stretch the nerves. If you're a back sleeper, keep your knees bent. When you, your knees are bent, like put like a log shaped or a pillow under your knees so your knees are bent so the sciatic nerve is being, isn't being stretched through your legs so tightly. This will hopefully help decrease the pain that you're feeling. Sometimes if you turn your feet outward, like as you rotate your feet toward outward can actually decrease the length of the sciatic nerve and decrease some stretching as well. If you're a side sleeper, put a pillow between your knees so your hips don't rock over and your knees rock over, which could possibly stretch the sciatic nerve as well. Left side sleepers can also switch to the right side. Now, interesting enough, sciatica typically affects the left side more than the right, which is interesting is the most common type of scoliosis is also left lumbar affecting the left side. So if you have sciatica and you have scoliosis, you may need to address your scoliosis because that could be associated to the causation of your sciatica. And if you have sciatica and you don't know if you have scoliosis or not, definitely get an x-ray and see if you have some scoliosis that's occurring because that could possibly be one of the reasons why you're developing sciatica on that one side. We know laying on that opposite side equals less pressure a point which can uh, help the affected area. Sometimes a warm shower or warm bath can help relax the muscles and soothe inflamed areas, help the, and help that relaxation of the muscles can help decompress some of the sciatic, sciatic pain that you're feeling. But the best way to address sciatica is to deal with a proactive treatment driven by the causative factors. And the causative factors are almost always related to spinal alignment in the lumbar spine, which can affect the discs can affect bone degeneration and can cause uh, bulging and herniations. Normally addressing these things can be directly, uh, can directly improve the sciatic pain that you're feeling because it can help decompress the sciatic nerve at the site of compression, which is the best way to deal with treatment options. So we recommend being proactive. Any signs of any type of sciatica, even mild ones, we definitely recommend treating them treating the cause as opposed to just hiding the symptoms because normally symptoms that are just hid with medications or drugs or injections, normally the alignment is sitting there and it's worsening over time, potentially leading to worse sciatic pain and a more difficult um, correction if we were to choose a conservative method. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.